Hello there and welcome back. So we're going to continue our discussion on surface area. So for question number three it says we want to find the surface area of the portion of the plane so remember this is my function of f of xy that lies above the unit circle in the first quadrant. So again we don't the first quadrant and of course we have the unit circle. Um, this is because we're above this in the first circle, first quadrant, of course, this is our base. And we can write that x squared plus y squared equals 1. So let's take a look at the region. It's always good to see the region that we're looking at. If we graph this in 3D, in the first quadrant, we have our circle. Oops, I think that might be a little bit too, too much. Okay, we have our circle. And we know it has a radius of 1 on both sides. And let's go ahead and graph our plane. Of course, uh, the all the intercepts here are 2. So the z is 2, uh, x is 2, and y is 2. And I can graph this. They did that purposely so it won't intersect. And what we're going to do is we're going to project that circle, like we've been doing all year, onto this plane. And if we do that, not drawing the scale, we project it, what we wind up with is this surface region right up here. So we're looking for the, this surface up top here. So it's the, we're looking for the part of the plane that intersects the circle. Oops, that's terrible writing. Let's see if I can erase that. That intersects the circle. There we go. So our base, of course, is the circle here. So let's talk about our base. It's all about the base. It's my circular base down here. Now, because it's a circular base, I'm actually going to use polar. So if I look at this, here's x and y. My radius, I know, is 1. So my radius, my change in radius, goes from 0 to 1. And my change in theta, as we rock around the clock, goes from 0, of course, to pi over 2. We're only looking at the first quadrant here, so 0 to pi over 2. So now we're going to get started. So remember my formula up here. We do need our partials of x and y with respect to x and y, so let's go ahead and get those. My partial with respect to x, it's already solved for z, so I don't have to, negative 1. My partial with respect to y is negative 1. So when I write out my surface area equation, we get our double integral, the square root of 1 plus the partial with respect to x squared, which is 1, plus the partial with respect to y squared, which is also 1. Now, don't forget, we have this dA right here, right? We have this dA, and for us, that's going to be, because we're in polar this time, r dr d theta. I'm going to choose polar because I'm actually going to solve this one here. And my domains go from, my r goes from 0 to 1, and theta 0 to pi over 2. I don't have to change the inside because there are no x's and y's, it's just 1's there. So remember up here to change from polar, we had to convert x squared plus y squared to r squared. We don't have to do that here because there's no x and y, everything is just a constant. And if I wanted to leave this alone, that would give me my answer, of course. But if I want to solve it, the first thing I'm going to do is factor out that square root of 3. 0 to pi over 2, 0 to 1, r d r, sounds like a good joke, d theta. If I integrate this, well, if I integrate this one, this one becomes r squared over 2. And that's easy to do, go one to one, 0 to 1. So what we're left with is the square root of 3, 0 to pi over 2, and this just becomes 1 half d theta. And that's not too hard either. We can probably do this from our head pi over 3 times 1 half theta from 0 to pi over 2 and that of course becomes what do we get? root 3 times pi over 4 and that would be our exact surface area for this example right here. Alright, so let's take, now that one's pretty easy to solve by hand. This one's not going to be, we'll take a look at it. So let's look at number 4 here. <coughs> we are asked to find the area of a portion of the surface, I don't know what shape that is, that lies above the triangular vertex region, that lies above the triangular region with the following vertices. So let's go ahead and get those vertices. Of course, this is going to generate 
a plane here. So we go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and generate this. Now, um, if sorry, there we go. Now, since I don't know what this looks like, it doesn't help me graph it. So I'm going to look at the base by itself. Okay. So if I let z be zero, because if you notice in each of these cases, z is zero. Z is zero there. So what we're talking about, this is my base, and it's going to be on the xy plane. So if I graph this on the xy plane here, my first point is one zero. My next one is zero negative one, and of course the other one is zero one right up here. And this is that triangular base. Now we are going to remember this is a part being projected onto our surface f of x y and what we want to do is we want to find that surface area of the intersection find the surface area of that intersection and that's what we're really looking for right here and it's not bad to do okay since I got this right here I can write these equations of the line here this line right here whoop, if I write the equation of this line you can solve for that one pretty easy this is just y equals what's that one minus x pretty nice and easy over here, we get y equals, uh, let's see here, negative 1 plus x. So I can get my limits pretty easy. My change in y, if I go vertical, I like going vertical, we're going to get negative 1 plus x all the way to 1 minus x. My change in x is, we can go right and left, we can go uh, from 0 to 1. Now don't forget we need our partials to get the surface area. The partial with respect to x, that's not too bad, negative 2x. The partial with respect to y is just 1. So to get my surface area, it's the square root of 1 plus the derivative with respect to x squared. So that's just 4x squared plus 1 dy dx. Remember, that's my area, my area, dA. So, and over here, what do we get? We're going to go from a change in y, negative 1 plus x, to 1 minus x, and 0 to 1 here. Now, this one, you don't want to solve by hand. Don't try to solve. You'll only make yourself cry. You can use a calculator for something like this, or a computer, or something like that. All right, let's take a look at the last one. Change the following calculation to polar coordinates. So they always say, like, we like polars because they're looking at, like, oh, look, there's a little circle there. Or the circular part here, this x squared plus y squared. Whoops. So we're looking to write this as a polar. We want to find the surface area of the following paraboloid that lies above the unit circle. Of course, that's our x squared plus y, y squared equals 1. So they're telling us that this is our base, and we're going to project that base up to our paraboloid, and we're going to be so happy and find that surface area. So let's talk about the base, because it's all about that base. This is no trouble here. My base has a radius of 1, and they want me to use polars, okay? So there's R, and we're looking how theta changes. So to get our limits, the change in R goes from 0 to 1, and the change in theta from 0 to 2 pi, my favorite mathematical wrapper. Okay, we're going to need our partials. I feel like I'm going to jail. We need a partials. Partial fingerprints. Okay, 2x, the partial with respect to y, 2y. And now I can find my surface area. Remember, we are going to be in polar, okay? So let's just write this, uh, like this, this becomes 1 plus 4x squared plus or y squared, and I'm going to leave this dA and r for now. Okay, I'm going to keep it very generic right here. Okay, that's my surface area. So now I'm going to do my conversion. I want to convert this to polar. So that's not too bad. That's just going to be r dr d theta, like a little joke. R d r d r. Over here, if I convert this to polar, I got my x squared plus y squared, so we get the square root of 1 plus 4 r squared here. And then our double integral, let's see here, um, r goes from 0 to 1, and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So there's our surface area equation. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this one, okay? Let's go ahead and solve this one. we got some time here. 
To solve this one, uh, we're going to use u substitution. So if we do u substitution, u would of course be this 1 plus 4r squared. du would become, uh, what's that, 8r dr. And dr of course becomes du over 8r. Now those r's will cancel and I got this 1 8 right here. So my new integral would be this 1 8, that's my 1 8 right there. And, and here we would get the square root of u or u to the 1 half. And uh, I'm going to keep this dr, uh, d, oops, sorry, that does not become that. Oops, messed up. So, and there we go. So if we integrate this, went a little crazy there. We would get 1 8 and this would become, what's that, uh, add 1 we get 3 halves so we get 2 thirds and of course this would become u to the 3 halves and of course our u is this 1 plus 4 r squared to the 3 halves and that goes from 0 to 1. Remember just doing the inside first. If I simplify this we're going to get, this becomes of course, uh, what's that, uh, 1 12th times plug in the 1, we get what's that, uh, 5 to the uh, 3 halves minus 1 twelfth, and you got to plug in the 1 too, and that just becomes 1. So we can leave that, if you wanted to be more fancy, I guess, we can better leave it this way, 5 to the 3 halves minus 1. And so that's what we're going to integrate next. I got that 1 twelfth on the outside, I got this 5 to the 3 halves minus 1, and now we're going to integrate this with respect to theta from 0 to 2 pi. And what do we get here? Whoo, this is not too pretty either. We have 5, that's still a constant. I guess I could factor that out. 5 to the 3 halves minus 1 over 12 theta from 0 to 2 pi. And of course our answer would be this 5 to the 3 halves minus 1 over 12 times 2 theta. Alright, that is pretty ugly answer right there. Alright, hope you enjoy these videos. I'll see you later. Alright, bye-bye.